Ready? Test it. All right, turn our music back. Let's get cracking here. It's another episode from Broke to Millions, baby. Thanks so much for joining us for this live podcast for Broke to Millions, where we share the secrets to life, money, and real estate. This podcast is for the person who wants to elevate their life, money, a real estate game, a real life monopoly, man. Whether you're a sophisticated investor or you're a beginner, whether you want to be active, passive, accredited, non-accredited investor, I will share you with you all my real estate experience. So whatever you got going on, whether it's going sideways or upwards, we can help you turn it all the way around because here at Nassau, we are the number one real estate uh, experts with real solutions. But before we get started, man, I got to tell you about From Broke to Millions, man. Get your copy if you don't have it already, man. This book is changing lives. Man, I'm telling you. Hey, hey guess what? Guess who got my book? Who has your book? DJ Envy got my book now from yes, the sir. Breakfast Club, man. DJ Envy got... does have your book, doesn't he? And I, and I think Killer Mike got my book, man. I ain't seen Killer Mike's book. Uh, we, I'm, 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 he gonna get it now. He gonna get it now. Yeah, he gonna get one now, <laughs> man. So uh, we we've been rolling a little bit, man. Don't play me on that situation, man. Right, we're gonna figure it out. Right, also, this is brought to you by it's coming soon, Burr Three Hundred and Sixty. You're like, what is that? Burr Three Hundred and Sixty. We're about to have the biggest conference in Cincinnati, all about real estate. Literally, Burr Three Hundred and Sixty, because we're gonna take you from wholesaling to uh, uh, burying, to house hacking, to Airbnb, to apartments, to hotels, to developments, all at the Burr 360 conference. Oh, Burr 360, man, yeah, that sounds fantastic. We, we I'm gonna, excited. We are gonna read it. Tracy Ling just says she finished reading the book, man. Hey, but look, man, uh, look, man, from brokedominions.com, man, get your book and, uh, also, give it up for my man, audio and visual, my man, Walt, Piety the Pipe, Piper. What's up, baby? What's happening? What's happening? It's all you, brother. How you been, man? No, I've been stressed, but I'm here. Yeah, you are, man. Them loans or something else, man. Bruh. And then also, man, we want to give a shout out, but he is not here. He is actually visiting his mother in California. Uh, the Asian Persuasion, Window the Goose Bond. Yeah, Wynn's not here, so yeah, I guess Trump, I got to do Wynn's job. Show his seat. At least we shared oh. save the seat. Uh, we didn't I didn't turn it. his camera on. Okay, we didn't take his seat. Hey, we know what? We should have got a cut out of his face. <laughs> 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 we need that for next time. We definitely need that for next time. Uh, Malika got her hand raised. See what Malika needs. That's my one of our superstars. What you need, Malika? Uh, but look, man, we got a great episode here today. What we got here, man? We're gonna talk. Tracy about... has her hand up. One, one, oh, Tracy. Tracy oh, Tracy has her hand up. Man. Okay. So I'm what? Sorry. What all we got here? We're gonna talk. I finished reading the book. Thanks for sitting. Oh, you finally got it all the way in Canada, eh? 
<laughs> you should have just took it down to her when you went. I know, man. She was so far away, man. Yeah. Uh, but today we're going to talk about uh, how to find deals in today's hot market. Oh, my gosh. You got to show them our uh, Instagram post. Can you pull that up? Um, oh, I, I send I... a copy and paste it. Yeah, I, I copy and paste it. See if you can send that. Oh, my gosh. People are like, I can't find a deal. But when I saw this post, I was like, yeah, you're going to. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Yeah. Here. Yeah. OK, here. Uh, I'm going to send it to you. I'll see if you can post that up there, man. But yeah, no, man. Uh, what we got going on, man? Oh, I got to do Wynn's job. If you don't know Mike, Mike has been investing <laughs> since 2008. He went broke and almost homeless. Had to sleep in a room that was pink and lavender. And his 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 credit was so low, it could have been a golf score. <laughs> Everyone, welcome Mike Bailey. Hey man, I think I think people hold me back here today, man. This this jacket because it was a little chilly. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We all miss win. Yeah, we uh, do miss win. But uh, I think I did. I think I did a pretty I good it, I think win, good Tracy. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think you did. I think you did. Uh, so look, man, we're gonna talk about how to find uh, deals in the hot market. We're gonna interview one of our mastermind students. Uh, Joe Archibald and how he invests passively in real estate. He's yeah. out there in Illinois doing it big. Joe got a dope story. Yeah, yeah. And then um, we're going to do some question and answers. Uh, and then Mike's millionaire mindset, 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 mindset. Mike's millionaire mindset. I'm sorry, y'all. Yo, yo, we don't get to do too much foolishness when wins around. <laughs> yeah, so right. y'all getting a bunch of our foolishness today. Yeah, like, stay on track. <laughs> right. He told me, he he sent me an email. He said he wanted you to, he said, I need you to get a clock to put on the screen yeah, for, we, for Mike. We do. We do. Yeah. All right, let's get on. Right, hey, now that you meant it's a clock, uh, let's jump right into, uh, you know, how we find real estate deals in today's hot market. And for those of you on uh, Instagram, hey, man, you can always join us on Zoom. Uh, let me see. Here we go. Zoom U.S. Uh, right? And then you type in the number. What's the code here? 844. Yeah, for those of you who don't want to join us on Instagram, go to Zoom.us. And the ID number is 844-0809-08, I'm sorry, 0890, and then 1828. So those of you want to join us on Instagram, you just go right there, man. Oh, how do I pin it? There we go. Okay. You ready to do it? Yeah, and look, man, again, all you on Instagram, Facebook, Facebook group, Apartment Investor Secrets, everywhere you go, man. Always send up a like, where you from, uh, what you want to learn, and uh, we're going to get into it. So look, man, a lot of you are like, man, how do I find an off-market deal, man? Like, it's tough out there. You get my text? Yeah, I got it. Can you pull it up? Yeah. Yeah. We'll show it a little later, man. But where are you going to find the deal, man? I know it's tough, and you just got to keep working at it, brother. Like consistency. Uh, fortunately, we've been around for a while, but we got people calling us on a regular basis. But yeah, it is tough, man. Uh, next slide. When, well, uh, yeah, they know who I am. Let's go to the next one, man. I think I need to ask you. So how do you find single family homes? Uh, man, single family homes, man, you, you can find those just about anywhere. Uh, but they are challenging. So who do you go see when you're looking for one? Go to a wholesaler. Yep. A lot of deals that I found, I found through wholesalers. Wholesalers are still getting a bag, man, because that's their gig. Now, don't get me wrong. I got a lot of people that used to wholesale. They're not wholesaling as much. Matter of fact, when they do get a wholesale deal, they kind of keep it. So that's what, how tight it is. But you still can get some. I mean, my guy, Paul. Uh, and a couple other people, they still send me deals. Matter of fact, a guy out of Texas, um, he called me about an apartment deal not too long ago. So it's still out there. Uh, attorneys, 
Now, those are going to be a great source uh, for deals. Why? Because the attorneys are dealing with probate, right? Probate, somebody passed away, they got a property, they don't want to deal with it anymore. And guess what they do? They try to offload it. And so they reach out to um, different people uh, like yourself and, and they want to sell it, but they want to deal with something, someone they know that when they sell it, the deal is done, right? So when you deal with probate terms, be on it, be, 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 you know, be exact, make sure you do what you say you're going to do. And, you know, eviction attorneys, eviction attorneys are a great resource as well, because sometimes uh, when you deal with eviction attorneys, you know, a lot of those landlords slash owners are like, man, I'm tired of, man, it's just, I'm tired of the tenants, toilets, and trash, and I just want some cash. And that was pretty good. Tenants, toilets, trash, and I just want some cash, baby. That reminds me of that commercial where dude was like, I'm tired of my thighs rubbing together. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, man, eviction attorneys would be a great source. Now I'm not saying you're going to get tons of leads from eviction attorneys, but you will begin to know all the owners. And guess what? You just keep calling, you keep sending them letters and you keep saying, asking what property do you want to sell? You, you know, and, and you know what, to help them out, drive past the ones you think is deals. All right. Look, people don't know they want to sell until they ask to be sold sometimes, right? Uh, title companies are a great place where you can find uh, some deals. You know, let the title agent know that you're always interested in buying and, and, and you keep telling, hey man, the market's crashing or this or that, but you got somebody need help. Hey man, I'll take care of it. And look, our title company helps us all the time, sending us deals. Matter of fact, Terry Money, uh, always reaching out to me, whether assisting somebody or a potential deal. Uh, and then there was a couple other people that they literally reach out to me because they're at the closing table and they can't close the deal. And they say, Hey, can I, can I, I may have somebody to help you if you don't mind. And they, yes. And that's how we found some deals. So I'm not saying you'll always find a deal through the title company, but you know, you can get some, uh, there's bandit signs. Now I'm not a big bandit sign, but window, uh, my guy, Paul Glenn, uh, Jurius, uh, they were big bandit sized guys, man. Literally, they get those white signs uh, and they'll post them, you know, with the stakes and all the exit ramps uh, everywhere. Matter of fact, they used to put them on the um, telephone poles as well. Um, but now people kind of got hip to them bandit signs, man, and them communities be going off. Now, isn't it isn't it a, a, a very large cost involved with bandit signs? No, bandit signs are really not expensive. Really? No, not at all, man. I mean, you can get like 300. I mean, I think they were like 50 cent, maybe a dollar. With the with the poster? Yeah. Word. Bandit signs weren't expensive. Okay. I don't remember how much it cost, but it wasn't expensive. What was expensive and time consuming is Writing, we buy houses five 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 five. Why do they put five 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 anyway? Because that's not a real area code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that was the tough thing about bandit size. And no matter when you put your bandit size down, by the end of the weekend they were gone. See, a lot of people will put bandit signs out uh, during the week, like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, well, Thursday, right? Those were more likely to get taken down, but that's kind of the prime time you wanted out because the people that's working yeah. or the people with money, those are some of the, not saying not all of them, but a lot of times they're coming off that exit ramp. They see that sign and they call. Uh, 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 but if you put it down during a week, a lot of times they will pull your sign out. Uh, but the weekend, hey, everybody's off. So you get Friday, Saturday, Sunday, your sign is up. You got three, three straight you days. Got three of, days, uh, and then by Monday, it's out of there. Uh, there's direct mail. I, now, look, a lot of these were not. Look, you got to find a technique that works for you. I'm not really into all these different techniques, man. Uh, quite frankly, I know they work. Why do I know they work? Because I got plenty of people that are successful. Because they call me when they get the deal. And it ends up being through one of these uh, these opportunities. Uh, so direct mail is good. 
uh i i got i got one or two but you know you gotta send a lot of direct mail out like people need to see it probably seven eight times reminds me of the story of uh, les brown when he was trying to be a dj uh you know he says the mentor says look man because les was getting upset and depleted because the guy kept telling him no kept rejecting him on his job and he said man People need to say no about seven times before they get to yes. A lot of people don't even know they're negative. So what in layman's terms, what I'm telling you is a lot of people ain't even paying attention, right? And then finally, it's like after the seventh time of seeing it, you know, being planted to see, they finally like, oh, man, I need to call this guy, right? Uh, cold calling via Section 8, Yes. Again, that's kind of like the eviction guy, but look, you go straight to the Section 8 list and you call all these people that own the property and say, hey, do you want to sell? Do you want to sell? Do you want to sell? And you keep calling. Look, sometimes it happens uh, within a month. Sometimes don't. I, I had I had a, one of our partners, Matt, he called on a guy, not necessarily through Section 8, but he called him on his property. I swear to you, he talked to this guy for over two years. Over two years for, uh, and we ended up, oh, it was like a portfolio of 277 units, which we sold off some and kept some, rehab some. I mean, literally, the average was about, we paid 25 a door. Uh, we would put 10 a door, and they were worth 55 a door. So uh, 10, 25 plus 10, that's 35. So there's a $20,000 profit per door, roughly. But actually, it ended up being more than that. But my point is, cold calling for somebody for two years to get, uh, let's see, what we would actually make here. <clears throat> now they worth 30 a door, at least. <clears throat> 30 times, and we got 125 left. That's $3.7 million. Was that worth calling for two years in a row? Yes or yes? Yes. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, so also networking on bigger pockets, you know, now bigger pockets is really kind of a great real estate platform because you're in there with novice, some skill, a lot of them working in different things. And you know, I mean, it's great. Uh, but I, I, you know, but you're limited to what you can see. You can respond to people, but if you're trying to market anything, you know, I suggest not do that. That's where you get your Facebook group, like Burr Invest, wholesalers, groups, um, and, and even apartment invest secrets, although I wouldn't go to single family soon. And look, always networking offline like RIA, you can't go wrong. Going to a real RIA, uh, real estate investment uh, 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 association, uh, is a great place to get started. I, you know, I didn't go a lot, but I did attend. There's a lot of great value, a lot of great content, like all these different places you go to a lot of great content, a lot of great value on, on getting yourself there. Let's go to the next one. Yeah. So guys, again, if you don't Instagram, man, come on over, go to meet us on zoom, man. You can see this whole PowerPoint, uh, multi-unit apartments. Where can you find deals? I'm going to tell you. I like I always talk about loop net. Yeah, thank you. But man, my man, was that Daryl? Yes, last week. Yeah. He what found a couple mean? of deals on loop net. Yeah. I mean, I found some of my best deals on I found Oak Harbor where I netted a million. Uh I found uh Steve Terman, which I ended up buying multiple units from. Uh, I found another guy, Corey, who brought me three or four apartment deals, millions of dollars. So I get upset with LoopNet. I finally, after talking about it so long, on how I hate LoopNet, because it's just not consistent. You don't always find a deal because a lot of times people that put on LoopNet, they, they, they don't really do a lot of commercial properties, a lot of apartments. And so... You, you don't see a lot of deals. And when you do, you got to move fast and the value may not as well. Naturally, you always got to put your own offer in, use your own discretion. But, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, I'm a hater of loop now. But you do find deals occasionally, just not all the time. Uh, but where you will find a deal is commercial real estate, bro. You got to stay in tune to these brokers. 
because they got all the deals. And guess what they do? The commercial real estate broker is equivalent to a wholesaler per se, right? Uh, the difference is they really focus on calling all these apartment owners. They literally have a marketing system where they just calling, cold calling owners, property managers to see if they want to sell and they list it. But look, instead of acting as a broker, cold call to find your own deal, right? And, and there's, look, there's nothing wrong with using a broker, man. If the broker's feeding you, man, let's have it, okay? Uh, property managers is another great way of finding deals. Uh, my man, Tim Vest out of South Carolina, uh, North Charlotte, rather, uh, North Carolina, he, once he started getting into the deals, property managers call him about deals. Yeah, they're calling him about deals. So you don't necessarily have to go to the broker. You don't have to go that bit. You know, a wholesaler can help you. I mean, uh, property managers can help out as well. Uh, there's also, uh, there's a loud static noise. Okay. Walt, can you come fix this? They tell on Instagram they got a static noise. You think so? Try it again. Let's see if they can hear better. Or you go to Instagram and figure that out. Uh, and then apartment units, you can find from wholesale. Man, my man, Jarius, he was a wholesaler. And we ended up uh, finding, oh, I said that's better. Thanks. We ended up finding a couple of deals. And matter of fact, I ended up selling my deals. Uh, Opa, start it again. Uh, I started finding deals through wholesalers. Yep. All right, Instagram, we'll get you together in a second, buddy. Don't worry about it. Now we can't hear you. All right. Oh, my goodness. Life is tough. Did I hit a mute button? Let's see here. We'll get you together. Put thumbs up. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Join. All right. Disconnect what you just did until it didn't work. Okay, we're going to disconnect again. If you disconnect on your end, Walt, and then we try it again. Still have static. It's worse. It's terrible. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I hear that static, too. You got it? All right. We good now? Still have static. Greedy genius. Greedy genius, and, and I can't run that. You can hear on Facebook. Now it started again. This sucks, man. All right, join us on Facebook. Take the charger out. Take the charger out. Let me try to charge it out. Nope. Still can't hear us. All right, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, co call property owners, apartments.com. Disconnect the air, but I bet you new ones, champ. Yeah, I probably do, man. Uh, here, let me do this. Uh, I'm going to take this out. And let's see if you can hear me here now. All right, and then networking online, Facebook groups like Apartment Investing Secrets or network at multifamily conferences and seminars. Hey, that's how we can do it. And that's where you can find deals. So all these different places. And look, come to Bird 360, most likely September 2022, where you will learn all these different things, man. Everything. I won't touch nothing, greedy genius. <laughs> it's like, please don't touch nothing. All right, let's go to the next slide. Uh, here's a deal that was brought to me by a wholesaler. All right, I'm going to turn the camera around so you guys can see that. See, look at that. I ended up buying this 30 unit uh, for 400. Well, yeah, I paid $450,000. You realize I passed on this deal like three or four times. And what was so great about this deal, uh, the neighborhood was shifting. And it was all because I, I started doing some other deals in another C area. I realized that we could push the rents. And I thought the rents were going to be, you know, a minimum 800, but I thought we'll start off at 900. We ended up getting a 12, 1300 a month in rents. I had projected that this deal would be worth 2.3, 2.4. Now this project's worth over 4.7 million. Let's just say 5 million now. $5 million on a deal I didn't want to do at first. And a wholesaler bought it. 
and brought it to us, and we gave him a fee of $20,000. $20,000. Uh, like, look, that's because of relationships. So you got to go out. How do we meet this guy? I can't say I met him through Rhea, but Rhea been going to different places. You, matter of fact, let me tell you a good Rhea is. I actually met, I spoke at a Rhea event years ago. And it just so happened, the same guy that was pitching me on a deal, we ended up talking later and he really started understanding real estate. Now he's bringing money to the deal and, and deals. So yeah, Rhea, you can still make it happen, man. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Tim Vest is one of our mastermind members. Found a 31 unit deal through his property manager. He gets it all the time. Like now Tim's on a roll. And matter of fact, hey, give a round of applause for Tim, man. Again, man. For those of you who are listening on Instagram and everywhere else, Tim was one of our students that joined us and kind of questioned his, his skill set. And guess what? Almost 16 months later, he is leaving the J-O-B. Is that amazing? He really went to work. He's bought multiple properties using the Burr method, using uh, no money down techniques, syndication, all these different things, and still buying. So look, man, uh, nasainvest.com backslash waitlist, nasainvest.com backslash waitlist. Join the classroom is open back up, and you could be a part of it. Next one. Uh, where do you find hotels? Man, I look. Hotels, first of all, I don't know why y'all keeps using the same picture. That TV is terrible. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> My kids are like, bruh. It's terrible. Uh, yeah, that one definitely needs a remodel. I don't know. I'm like, and everything's in yellow and orange. That's pretty impressive. Is Somebody's that, really staying there. It's like a bag in there. Is that green on the wall? It is lime green. I mean, actually, it's the colors of today. Really? Just not too colorful, I guess. Or it's too colorful. I don't know. Uh, but where can you find hotels? Now, look, most of my hotel deals, they all come from my operator or my property manager. Yeah, my property manager. Um, but guess who brings it to the hotel operator? the real estate broker and guess who brings it to the real estate broker sometimes the hotel lender or what we call the servicer yeah because a lot of these hotels they were um non-performing wasn't performing my last three deals my last three hotel deals came from a uh a, a servicer meaning they manage mortgages and then they reached out to a broker like yo get this off my book but let's do it quietly. I don't want to put this out. And I, I can't. It was a commercial backed securities. Now, some of you are like, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, commercial backed securities, when they lock in, they're confirming last in a contract telling these investors that conduit that they're going to uh, they're going to take their money and give them a certain return over a period of time. So they don't want to break that contract up. And so when they do that, uh, um, um, you know, they, they let people assume the debt. Now, I don't know what the big deal is. I guess it's tons of paperwork and they may have to come up with some fees, but I don't know why they just went and, uh, well, they did it. They did it. They just stole away. Uh, and so a lot of networking for hotels comes from lenders, operators, and LinkedIn. I've had numerous deals get sent to me LinkedIn, and I met a lot of people at the Hunter Hotel Investment Conference. Uh, I met, well, I can't say I met my partner, but I did meet my construction team and potential people to raise money at a conference. And it was specific, specifically the hotel, Hunter Hotel Investment Conference, which by the way, did I tell you Burr 360 is coming in September? I did? Okay. Exciting. It's going to be, this is going to be a huge, huge conference, right? The, the difference is, we're going to party and learn and educate and be, become empowered, man. So it's going to be amazing. Let's go to the next one. 
Uh, recently, uh, what I already shared, man, I got three hotels through lenders, man. I did mortgage assumptions, didn't really have to bring money down. I, I did, technically, I did not have to bring any down payment, technically. I did have to, well, the home too, I really did. Like, I could have took over with no money, but everybody knows if you're operating a business, you can't just do it with no money. But we raised like just shy of a million bucks and we took over the deal. And that money, and then I went on and paid the mortgage up for the year. All right. It was pretty sweet, man. It was pretty sweet, you know. Hey, I got to show you all these colors here, man. I'm rocking my shirt. You know, I got, I always got, I always got a shirt. I got a rock. Instagram, yeah, what do y'all think about my shirt here today, man? I got a lot of color. Facebook, you know, I, I don't know. Does this, does this express me? Does this tell me, you know, uh, for for the quiet person that you are, the, it's a lot. the loud colors that you do wear, it, it's it, it kind of almost doesn't balance out, but then it does. It does, and it does. Yeah, it's like yeah. Till you start, till you, till you start talking, it's like oh okay. Oh okay, okay. Uh, outside yeah. of here, Mike Mike's pretty quiet. Yeah okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, whole two suites, Hampton Stabridge. By the way, my Hampton and Stabridge is. Killing it. Yeah. So the one in Indiana? Yeah, the two in oh. Indiana. Like, hey, when people are fearful, be greedy. And we were being greedy and man, we getting paid. I'm so excited about those. All right. Uh, let's go to the next one, man. What we got next? So look, man, if you want to find and analyze large apartment deals, hotels, and how to raise private capital, go to nasainvest.com backslash waitlist. Nasainvest.com backslash waitlist. Look. I'm going to be putting a lot of energy over here in the next couple of months in that course. We're going to have special meetings, invite people in town where we, you'll get to meet some of my team and what all we do. All you got to do is join the course if you want to change the game. But look, it's not for everybody. Got to have some experience, right? Uh, but look, next week, uh, we're going to talk about how to buy properties with no money down, even hotels. Yes. I'm still using my no money down techniques. And did you realize you can still house hack with a hotel? It's a little more work, but you can house hack with a hotel. I'm telling you, it's the same techniques, boss. Just keep working. And look, man, we're now. So, so you're yeah. saying we should live in the hotel? You can. Well, I guess all, all my, all my, my, my Indian brothers did it. Word, I didn't know that. They come over, work at the hotel, and live there, live free. The family work there, and then they go from there. Once they learn the system, they keep building and they build a new and buy a new. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, and then only that, man. Like, there's you, you don't have to go with the big hotel no more. We're moving into where people wanted this new experience. Um, not all of them, but. You can book a little small boutique hotel and um, um, rent it out and, and, and live there and make money and good money. Very profitable. So, hey, it's on you. So stay tuned next week. How to buy properties with no money down, even hotels. That's our topic. So what we got up next? We got, I think we got Joe. We'll go to the next oh, screen. He is. He's coming. Make sure. He's coming. He's coming. I think we got Joe up next. Yeah. Um, so what else we got on this slide, man? Anything else? Yeah. We got and then uh um, there's Joe. There's Joe. Hey Joe. Woo, look at Joe, man. He got the bow, got a hot, hot girlfriend, wife. I don't know, Joe. Got the beer. He's looking good. <laughs> wow. I don't know where that picture is from. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that is not the biopic that when asked for. <laughs> that is outstanding. I love it, man. Hey, man. That's the lake right there, brother. How to invest in real estate passively. No more tenants, toilets, and trash. We're going to talk to Joe on how he does that there, man. Uh... <laughs> Hey, when you know what? Uh, I, I'm, I guess I'm win today. Yes. Yeah, well, oh, I gotta change this, it. Yeah, change that, 
and then get the Bluetooth phone so we can hook up to the Bluetooth. I'm gonna get the Instagram on Bluetooth here. All right, and Joe, uh, if you clear the screen here, uh, or put Joe on so I can see him. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. All right, and, and turn that Bluetooth up. Yeah, they can hear. Instagram, can you hear us on there? Joe, what's going on, brother? Hey there, Mike. You know, interesting conversation today. I, I think most all of the real estate that I've been involved in to this point has to be um, really founded in working closely with a with a good broker, um, a, <laughs> a very dear friend of mine, somebody I've known just for a real long time. Uh, he was he's he's been my broker friend and. Yeah. Uh, as a broker and property manager, I think they just see so much and have access to so much uh, stuff, either the MLS, pocket listings, and people coming to them and bringing them deals that once you're plugged in and you're connected into that network, it, it certainly is an advantage that um, th they're definitely the people to get to know. For me, I started out small. I, I, I did a, my first project was a fix and flip. Yeah, yeah. Just right around the uh, 2006 time frame. Um, ultimately, it was essentially it was golf course arbitrage. We bought a really? we bought a single family home that was on a golf course. It uh -huh. was actually an off the course home, but yeah. the cost delta from the homes that were on the course versus off the course uh -huh. were easily a hundred thousand dollars. So for us, we were able to acquire a home that had a a, a, a really nice little private yard. We remodeled it from top to bottom. We did the bathrooms, gutted the kitchen, moved load bearing walls. Oh, you went the in. And you did, did the whole, did you the didn't whole do thing. no lipstick. You didn't do any lipstick. You went at it. It was a, it was a big one. It was in a nice area, and so you know we replaced the uh, replaced the windows, did the siding, and unfortunately, well, fortunately, unfortunately, we finished that, and it was mid 07, right? So mm -hmm. the market started to get really soft. Um, by the time we listed it. It, the market the market got pretty tough so i think we could have done a lot better on it but we were quite frankly we were actually very pleased to just be out of it so nice. we knew guys that were doing it on the course and they were giving those properties back to the bank back then so oh man that was man that was a good time a good time bad time so Joe, <laughs> you, you you're born you're born in i didn't know you were born and raised in naperville still out there investing and you're kind of in a great situation. You've been doing it over 15 years, been focused on uh, multifamilies. And now you're kind of like, man, I got great cash flow, uh, but you kind of want to step it up now to another level. Uh, tell me about that, man. What, what, what's going on? Yeah, so about 10 years ago, we bought our first small multifamily, and then we bought another one almost the next day. And that just kind of, once we were in acquisition mode, we were just starting to see them left and right. Um, I think we, you know, since then we did uh, an owner finance deal. We did a no money down deal. We've got an investor that's using a self-directed IRA fund. And um, so for me, we got to 30 units out in my market and it really was like creating another full-time job. And based yeah. on that, it just, it, I really couldn't grow organically on my own. Um, mm -hmm. these were, these were my assets. I was handling them on my own. I'm not partnered into these with a bunch of other people. So it made it pretty challenging for me to look at it and say, how do I, how do I expand from here and wanting to diversify, wanting to look into other markets. Um, I wanted to better understand what passive investing looked like a while back. I was introduced and connected with a broker dealer rep mm -hmm. who was investing in deals all over the country as a limited partner. Um, the time I, I looked at it and thought, the amount of time it would take me to learn another market, build a remote team, yeah. try to take on some asset and, and do all that. Just, you know, it was, it was just, it was way too, way too big for, for me to really consider uh, as an option. So we, we started talking and I, I explained to him my experience in real estate. They were looking to grow their team. And the biggest challenge was going to be that they were going through compliance. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. 
for me to join that team uh, meant that I was going to have to go and get my license. And uh, so once, <laughs> once we decide, once I decided to do that, I spent six months studying and testing for my securities license. Um, I took the SIE, which is really the securities industry overview, um, the series, did I say the series 63? I took the SIE, the series 63, which covers securities law, and then the series 82, which is specific to real estate. And then with that, I became a broker dealer rep. So you went from uh, doing real estate deals and, and from my understanding, you, your, your rent roll grew to 350,000 a year. You got tired of the tenants, toilets and trash. <laughs> it was like, man, how I'm going to grow this thing. And you said, uh, you know what? Let me do it passively. And so now you invested in over a thousand units and you went and got your license. And now you raise capital to do real estate transactions? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a, obviously, it's a unique path. I think a lot of people want to participate on the GP side. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you've got, a, you've got a, a, an army of followers uh, uh, that are connected to you, Mike, that, uh, that, are, that are doing exactly that and, and killing it. For me, it was, uh, you know, the passive path just based on my time, where I could push in. I think what people don't understand as, as a limited partner, the ability to invest as a limited partner, the, the operator sponsors or the general partners provide just so much information from what the project looks like, what the asset looks like, what the market looks like, how they're going to approach that project and their timeline, and then also outline what this is going to pay out. It's a, uh, it, it's, it's pretty spectacular once people really start to understand what, uh, what a syndication and what a, what look, what it looks like to be the LP. Yeah. I mean, that's interesting to me. Like you said, like, yeah, I don't want to do all this work, man. Let, let, I could find somebody that got the skill set and, and invest with them. And now I have to worry about the tenants, toilets, and trash, and all the daily things, and still be profitable. I mean, you know, have you what? What is the? Is that what you're encountering? Like, if you find the right team, you can just enjoy real estate just as well. The same. Absolutely. And so, for us as a broker dealer, uh, large sponsors are coming to us, and so they're looking to just actually have somebody commit to raise capital for them. So they 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 take an asset, uh, they've got it uh, under uh, under contract, and they've got a short amount of time to bring that funding. Uh, and you know what they're going to use if they're if they're doing a value add. So they'll want the down payment, and they'll need you know whatever they're going to use for remodeling. Yeah, they need yeah. to know, they need to ensure that they have those funds when they close. Otherwise, they're going to unwind a deal. Um, so they'll come to a broker dealer, whether it's five million or eight million or ten million bucks, and uh, the broker dealer will sign on to that. We use a uh, third party independent financial analyst mm -hmm. who reviews and vets the sponsor operator, looks at their project. We physically go do a site visit and walk that uh, asset before we decide we're going to invest in it. And then uh, we invite our investors alongside us to, to invest in those deals. Man, that's pretty interesting. I mean, you really got by just jumping out there, trying to be passive. Now you even find an analyst to review the deals to report back to you. Like, you know, what, what was some of the, as a landlord in active, you know, what, you know, that, it was not easy. What were some of the challenges you encountered as an owner? Yeah. You know, for me, it was the things that, you know, as you, as you grow and you get more involved in it, it's uh it, it's all over the place. As you know, you have people that contact you with issues and challenges ranging from somebody's parked in their parking spot and they can't handle that to people calling while I'm sitting at an Easter dinner and telling me they've got a, a gas leak. So, you know, over the years, once you pull a toilet up and you replace a toilet, that's one thing. Uh, endless, endless amounts of garbage and, <laughs> and red tape. I think by far the thing that drives me the most nuts is as a as a property manager, you've got you've got an agreement. You're you know, you're you're in relation with your tenants. 
to some extent, right? And mm -hmm. you're you're providing them a clean, safe place to live. And really in response, all you're looking for somebody to do is take care of the place, pay yeah. the rent, meet their obligation. Yeah. And when all that starts to break down, it's pretty difficult. But you can usually, now I start to see the telltale signs, right? Rent starts to come a little late. They're not taking care of their place. Yeah. Communication starts to fall apart. Yeah. Then, it, uh, then we're down the slippery slope. Oh. So why did you shift your focus on being a passive investor now that you're this broker dealer and you were, you know, a landlord, you were active, you know, what made you really shift? For me, it's really just about my time. Um, you know, you only got so much time and you, the amount of, I, I can't account for the amount of time that I've had to go and run and look at something, fix something, get somebody else involved over the years. You know, when I started, we had to go and collect rent. Now you can collect all your rent electronically, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. My phone starts clicking away on the first or just before the first, and those are rents coming in. Well, that's what driving. they call that mailbox money, baby. Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not driving to an apartment and holding my hand out trying to find out where where the money is, and uh, so those, so it's it's gotten much more streamlined. You know, you connect with good, uh, uh, good repair people. Uh, and, and all that. And that it makes it, it makes it that much easier, but still uh, the, the, the more you, the more you add, if you're going to run it and do it yourself, it's, it, it takes a lot of time. Now, Unfortunately for me, uh -huh. my, my apartments are spread out and, and uh, aren't, aren't uh, close enough that I can really throw property management on it effectively. So um, we'll, we've got to work through that. That's uh, that that's on the agenda for this year. Well, you, but you're in a pretty good spot. Like you got value in your real estate, million and a half, maybe two, uh, if I remember in equity. Yeah. And you were debating on whether you should sell or refinance, pull the cash out. And, 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 and what were some of the things that after we had our discussion so, to help some other people out here, what were some of the things you came up with? We came up with, and what do you think you're going to do? Yeah, that, that, you know, Mike, and from our conversation, that was really helpful. Uh, plugging me in uh, with the guys that uh, that they get networked me to. Um, you know, we started look at we've got this, we've got this equity, um, and it's trapped. It's it's in it's in assets that it's are doing well. It's incarcerated in your real estate. It, yes, you, you don't want to sell it. 1031 in individual, you know, three unit and four unit buildings is pretty complicated. Timing all that, it, it just it just seems as that's, you know, I think it's doable and there's guys that are doing it. It uh it to me it just isn't a, isn't a good path. But uh looking at the equity and trying to pull that equity out and then re, either redeploying it passively or buying something else altogether is uh, is really an interesting path and that's 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 where we're headed. Yeah, I mean, what was really interesting, like with with his with his his real estate, I mean, he can pull the cash out, sell it, and now sitting on a million plus, and investing something where the preferreds are now paying anywhere from eight to ten percent. Some getting a little lower, but you still can find eight to ten percent. I mean, on a million bucks plus, that's like a hundred grand a year. Like, that's good money. Like, you, I'm not saying you can't quit your job. I don't know. It depends on how you're living. But that's great cash flow every month. And, and you can find something to do it again. So that, those are the great things. Uh, but look, I know a, a lot of our, our, our listeners are novice as well. They just started. Will you break down what a broker dealy actually is and what they do? So a broker dealer, we're, we're essentially a a capital raising organization, the sponsors or the syndicators that are taking on debt are trying to figure out how they're going to acquire, they, they'll they either acquire the asset or they'll have the funding ahead of time. And they never have both at the same time. And as they, <clears throat> as they go from looking at a 50 unit building to let's say a 400 or a 600 unit building, if they need 20% down, that's a, it turns into a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so they'll come to a broker dealer and they'll say, hey, can you commit to 5 million? Can you commit to 10 million? We'll 
take it. We'll, we'll use what we consider best efforts practice to meet that obligation and provide them that, uh, that funding. Mm -hmm. And so we'll go to our group of investors for us. I think there's 16 other broker dealers in my in, uh, broker dealer reps in our group. And we'll go to our investors and we'll raise that capital for that, uh, for that event. Nice. So the limited partner isn't necessarily connected to us as a broker dealer at all. We're just connecting them with that sponsor operator. But for a, for a limited partner or for a, a, an individual investor to look at the hundreds or the thousands of sponsors that are out there, the, guy, the guys that are you know, doing a GP deal, yeah. it's, it's a, it can be a daunting task, I think, yeah, for absolutely. somebody to say, geez, I got to find a Tim Best. I got to find a Mike Ely. I got to find you know, somebody who's specific. They've got a deal in the market I want, the kind of asset I want, and this and that. And that, it, it, I think that, uh, that, that's probably a trick for, for the individual investor. Now, when these uh, institutions come in, do they take ownership or they actually plan as a broker? Um, just, hey, pay my fee. Here's the money. Do, do sometimes they get a cut or do they always take a cut? Like, what's a typical way of they structuring that? So for us as a broker dealer, we'll take a cut on the front. The syndicator is paying for that. And then we'll also take an equity on the end. Wow, that's great. So for the individual investor to use a broker dealer, there's it's transparent. There's no cost. Now, one other thing, and then I'm not to go too, too deep, but there's what they call FINRA, which is a license uh, for some of the brokers. Yes. Uh, it does, is that across the board with all broker dealers or do they get different licenses based on how they raise the money? I just, I just hear this FINRA and it's kind of tough. But once you get it, it's kind of golden, but you still got a lot of rules to follow. Yeah. So under the SEC, they created FINRA and FINRA was developed purely to protect the individual investor. Um, that's where all of my licensing resides under, you know, it's it's a, a oversight from the SEC. Mm -hmm. But FINRA is really the organization responsible for compliance for broker dealers. So most broker dealers are compliant maybe at the at the broker dealer level, mm -hmm. but not at the rep level. Uh, our groups made the decision to be compliant all the way through. So when a when a syndicator chooses to use us, we've already uh, we can show them our investors if they're doing a five hundred six C deal mm -hmm. uh, accredited only. We can show them that our you know uh, that that we've gone through the due diligence that our investors are accredited if they have to be. We right. obviously do have some that are 506B, which would include non-accredited investors as well. Man, that's pretty impressive, man. That's pretty impressive. So what, what's your next move now, man? Like you, 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 I know you, you're starting to figure out, hey, do I pull this cash out? Do I do this? Like, where are you going next? Well, it's uh, the market here. I think like everywhere in my market, it's, it's pretty tricky. Um, I'll continue to want to invest passively and look at deals as we see them. We're seeing deals in Arizona, Texas, through the Sun Belt, like everyone else. Um, some are single assets and some are funds. But I'm also looking at, you know, what, what might come next for uh, another active deal. So if I were to able to take a few of these assets and bundle them up and target and attack something larger, I'm still thinking about that. I actually just looked at a uh, a, a, a unique 25 unit motel that's in one of the towns right near me, Aurora. Oh, okay. Now look, we're, we're going to get a little technical. Let's see where, let's see if this class is really working with you, man. <laughs> I, I, I don't, we, this is, here's the, here's the good thing. No one really knows the answer. So oh, good. whatever you say, it could be right. Um, interest I'll sound rate. confident then. There you go. <laughs> interest rates are rising. Inflation is kicking up. Will, you know, people can't find deals. Heck, you can't even find the car. <laughs> What's going to happen with real estate? Will it go up? Will it go down? Are we going to see a bust? What do you think? Wow. You know, oddly enough, I was just looking at some graphs and between the median home prices continuing to skyrocket 
I, I think in the Phoenix metro area, I just saw that their median home price was over five hundred thousand dollars. Oh my goodness! <clears throat> so for the for the young couple, for the individual who wants to that that's looking to move to that market, the the barrier to entry is getting more and more challenging. And another statistic was just after the two thousand five two thousand six debacle going into two thousand seven the number of home starts just absolutely plummeted. And there's a giant gap from when, from that time to, I think like right now, 2020, 2021, we were almost getting back to the, to the level of construction um, that we had in 2005. So there's just this giant hole that they're, they're gonna, that they just can't fill. And as long as it's demands here, I think, you know, I think, I think it points to this, this market having legs for, for quite some time. Cap rates are obviously compressing and, you know, guys got to get creative if they're going to take on a three cap deal, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they are. <laughs> no, they got to be confident in that, man. Hey man, that was pretty good, Joe. How hey, about that? I, 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 I Hey, sounds <laughs> like it sounds right to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's no, that, that's really good. No, I mean, but we, we just don't know. But yes, I mean, I think the demand you talked to, right? The cap rates and when cap rates get this low, you might as well build because you can build and generate the same value. You know, it's just when you're at that seven cap, that eight cap, you know, I mean, you're waiting on the future or you're hoping that your rents will surpass that number, but you can only be in certain markets, for example. Um, at the time, uh, at least in Cincinnati, when you st- in the last three or five years, in order to build, you need to be making at least a dollar fifty, dollar fifty, dollar fifty five per square foot. Uh, if you want to build now, you need to be making a look over two dollars a square foot. Uh, but in Cincinnati, you only had one or two areas that were doing that, so that was the only area you could build in. So you're right with that demand there with housing. And, but here's the other thing, man. We're going to have a shortage of housing uh, for affordable housing. Now, I'm not saying I won't get into that market, but there is opportunity. Because if in order to do affordable housing, well, you're going to have to reduce your cost to build. So you're going to have to get subsidized or That's find right. a way to make it cheaper. The only way to do that is if you go do these tiny houses or these con- container homes, you know, yeah. or get a subsidy. That's and, right. And uh, I think I, I think pretty soon, at least for us, we're going to try some small houses, container houses. I, I said I wasn't going in a market, but you got to shift with the market. And um, I actually got to see one out here. For any of you out here in Cincinnati, you go out by Kings Island, uh, out right when you get off that next exit ramp, or just right by Kings Island. They created this little tiny home uh, rental community uh, with, with glamping, I guess you could say it. You literally can put <laughs> a tent, tent, you can park your RV, uh, and they got a big amenity center with the pool, and you got somewhere to eat. Like, it, I think that that thing is doing well. Like, I drove up outside of Kings Island this season, and uh, they've been renting those. I mean, a full place, like, I guess people going to work or living there. I don't know, but uh, yeah. I, I really see that as the future um, uh, for affordable housing. Yeah. You know, I'm not a big uh, uh, wine country guy. I mean, I, I went once it was very, very cool. We had a good time. We, uh, we enjoyed that. And we actually stayed in what I think was a mobile home park and mm-hmm. they had literally gone through each one of the units and really, really decorated them, put siding on them, put new windows in them, decked them out. I don't know if they were still on wheels or not, yeah. but it, it, you know, it, it was it was uh, essentially the Airbnb uh, mobile home park. And uh, I mean, these tiny homes are nothing but a, a mobile home park on steroids. Because look, if the markets, what I like about these tiny homes, guess what? The market's bad. Well, I'm gonna put this house on wheels, and we out. Peace. Right. Peace. Wouldn't want to be you. <laughs> I'm going where it's hot. <laughs> hey, Joe, man, give it up for Joe, everybody. 
Right, thanks so <laughs> hey, much, thanks, for Mike. man. I really appreciate you coming in, and thanks for sharing your knowledge, especially about why it's important to be passive and how to be a broker dealer. Man, all great things, man. And look, man, you look really good too, Joe, man. And I, and I, I, I got to get a more colorful shirt. <laughs> 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 all right joe thanks so much man peace out thanks mike hey uh look everybody let's go and see it's time for questions and answers man so we're gonna uh take any questions anybody got any questions answers you know we'll, we'll anybody on facebook uh we'll go from there Kristen caesar uh, uh cesar i'm sorry or kazar i'm sorry I have no problems finding single family homes, but I need to learn how to find apartments. Can't wait to learn. Well, we showed you how to do that. So that was what that whole session was about today. Uh, Probate attorneys, I get cold calls from investors. They get ignored. I won't work with someone who just wants to lowball the state. The wholesale knows and I send deals with people reach out, blah, 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 blah. You got a question? Okay, these are, man, look at this. This is everybody finding Brian. You don't have to keep telling everybody you found your deal on LoopNet. Quit bragging, bro. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy for you, man. Uh, that, that, that was tough, man. Um, and thanks for all the compliments on the shirt. I love the hotel. Yeah, the hotel hacking is sick, man. Man, my whole point is everything you learn, you don't have to do it just like how they, they do everything. Like <clears throat> for any of you that watch uh, these mu mu music shows, like America's Got Talent or The Voice, you know, the one thing they say all the time is, man, I love how you took that song and you made it your own. Mm -hmm. Look, it's the same thing. I, I want you to take that real estate and make it your own leverage it to how you want all right yeah you could be a little crazy but don't hey whatever you do don't put uh, <laughs> like this is cool all these colors on one on one shirt is okay but on one wall probably not now if you frame it and call it art hey you're good all right but uh, but look, I've been learning how, yeah, Womack says, I've been learning how to analyze hotels through your mastermind. I'm a little confused about how to input data on the assumable loan. How do you determine the starting and current loan? Is it in the STAR report? Okay, that's, I'm going to answer that question. So I'm going I'm to get a little bit, I, you know, lately, and I just take it for granted, but so many people have been asking me, when do you determine whether you should use the assumable loan or get a new loan? I mean, that's a great question. Uh, but for so those of you that are saying, hey, Mike, I got a deal and it already has existing debt. Should I use it or should I get a new loan? Well, there's a couple of things that you got to determine. Uh, I think one is you got to look at the existing rate, right? So for example, here's the first things. One, well, it's not the first, but not in a particular order, but one, you say, hey, what's this rate? And if they saying, hey, well, the existing loan is at 3.5% and the current market has 5%, well, guess what? I'm going to consider this loan, right? Because it, it's, it's costing me cheaper. Let's say, let's just do the math on that. Um, if we just did interest only at, let's say, $5 million, right? So $5 million times... 0.035, that's 175,000 annual debt payment interest only. That's 175,000. But let's say the rent or the interest rate was at 5% for $5 million, right? So times 0.5%, that's $250,000, a difference of $75,000. So number one, What's the interest rate? Is it higher than lower than what you can get? But the other thing is, because there's plenty of deals, I would love to assume the debt because it'd be perfect. But the actual current debt versus the sale price is so large, it's actually bigger, right? Bigger uh, than your actual down payment if you went and got a new loan. 
So, for example, there was a deal we were looking at. I think it was about, I don't know, 14, 15 million. No, it's about 20 million. And uh, at 20 million, and let's just say uh, I can get uh, what 20% down. So, if I did it with 20% down, that means I would have had to bring $4 million, right? Just keep it simple. Uh, some of you are like, well, I can't get 20%. I can only get 25%. All right, I'll do it that way. So uh, $20 million. Let me just show you times 0.25. That's $5 million. So look, either way, you're going to have to bring $4 million to $5 million to the table for your down payment. But on this particular loan, it was like, yo, man. I'll sell it to you for 20 million, but you got to assume there's a debt of 13.5 million at three and a half percent. Well, look, that looks good, right? Because I don't want to pay three, I don't want to pay 5%, which I'm losing 75%, 75,000 annual, right? But this is more than that, like 13, so 13.5 divided by 20 million, that's like 67%, right? So now you gotta bring over 30% to the table. See, 20 million, 20 million times 0.3, that's $6 million. So actually six and a half is what you would have had to bring, right? Yeah, you would have had to bring six and a half million. So you would have had to bring two and a half to a million and a half more than if you got a regular loan. So, but what you want to find out, hey, can I still cash flow this? Can I get a great return? And I'm betting, uh, not always, but when we did this one deal, even though I had a lower rate, I had to bring six and a half, but because I brought so much, the return versus bringing less money versus more, like if I'd only had to bring 4 million, the cash on cash return was like 8% or maybe 10. But because I had to bring six and a half percent, it dropped to where it was like four and a half, six percent cash on cash return for the project. And some of you are like, well, I would have still did that. And look, it had value. Um, the value would have been when we were done, probably 25, 28 million. But the problem was, if you were using your own money, pretty good, right? Because you're playing for the upside. You're playing for that $8 million. But if I'm using the, 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 that money, I got to produce a return while I own that asset. And I got to get that to the investors. And if I'm only giving 6 if I'm only getting a total of 6% back, that means I can't really pay that investor a 7 or 8% return until the rents fluctuate and get higher. So, you know, that's one thing. That's when you determine to use the, the star. Uh, I mean, determine if you're going to debt or uh, assume the debt or get new debt. Uh, how you term the star? You don't necessarily need a star report uh, for the current loan. That The star report strictly is marketing, uh, uh, <clears throat> understanding the market and, uh, and the market index. Of, of, of what that hotel or hotels are capturing in that area. And what I mean by that is they're capturing the occupancy, uh, they're capturing what's the average daily rate, what's the rev par, uh, you know, what where this hotel ranks in the market. So all it is is like a feasi monthly feasibility study is the STAR report. STAR report doesn't necessarily tell you anything about your, your loan or the debt service. All right, so Womack, I hope I helped you on that. Uh, any other questions on Instagram, Facebook? Uh, Walt, you see anything over there? Oh, uh, Miss Tracy. Oh, what you got, Tracy? What are the things you need to pay attention to for a mortgage assumption and in that period? Uh, say that one more time. Um, what are the things we need to pay attention for mortgage assumption in MF deals? Or oh, multifamily. What are the things we need to pay attention for mortgage assumption? Oh, that's multifamily. Family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking MF. Yeah, I know you were about to say mother sucker. Oh, mother sucker. <laughs> <laughs> why, why everybody cussing me out? 
<laughs> hey, 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 they really not like, wow. like what are things sure we need to upset. pay attention to for something, motherfucker? It's multifamily, not motherfucker. All right. Uh, it's the same thing, man. Like, can you push the rent? Um, that's one. Is that going to work? Um, in the lease, well, you got the bigger thing about assumption is when does the loan come current or come due right because most of these commercial loans are terms even though they're amortized over 20 25 30 years their term is probably 10 years so let's say they refinanced it but uh, that mortgage comes due in year three so you gotta go out and refinance right they had the loan for seven years and then you're gonna have to refinance in three years or or even a year but that's not bad, right? That's not the big thing. But unless you're betting or you're not sure where the market's going, all right? Uh, so not having that rate locked uh, may not hurt you that much, uh, but it could in the future if it went up uh, uh, tremendously. But the big key thing in a commercial is the defense. And you're like, what is that? Well, the main thing about defense is there. When they do a commercial-backed security loan, CMBS debt, they are promising, as I shared earlier, they are stating to their investors, to that conduit, that they're going to produce a certain rate of return over the life of this uh, real estate transaction. And if they don't, then you got to pay the difference. So when you go get a CMBS, they expect to make so much money in year four, year five, year six, year seven, year seven, eight, or whatever. And if you exit out prior to the term, you got to pay a defense fee. And that fee will be the difference. And it's this calculation, which I never get right. But it's the, the difference of, you know, you holding it for year, year three, year four. For example, my the hotel deal I did in Staybridge, Staybridge in Hampton, and they wanted to sell the deal. And look, the, the hotel at minimum, even through COVID, it was worth 16, 18 million. He only had debt at 13 and a half. So he could have walked away with money. I think they had offered 20 million actually. Um, but because he had defense and the loan was only, well, they got a 19, so 20, 21. The loan was only three years old. If he would have sold the loan and cashed out, he would have had to pay defense, right? And it would have been $4 million. So he wouldn't have made no money by the time he paid all the fees, the closing costs, reserves, blah, 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 blah. He wouldn't have made any money. And that's why we ended up partnering. So when you assume debt, that's what you really look for. The term, the interest rate, and defense. We got a new message down there. Let, uh, Let's see if we got anything. Uh, and somebody asked me about Robert Graham. No, but I normally do rock the Robert Graham shirt. All right. Mike from Arthur Robertson. Can we have your best advice for finding multifamily private and property investors? Again. Oh, wait a minute. Can we have your best advice for finding multifamily property wholesalers? Sorry. All right. Um, Define, well, most multifamily wholesalers, I can't really say they exist in that department, right? Like, or let me, not, not that they don't exist, but they strategically only sell multifamily. So, you know, you may find some, but nobody, I, most of the people I know don't really just focus on multifamily. So here's the thing, you educate your seller. I've told multiple people, like I had people that were wholesaling deals and they'll come across a multi-unit. And they're like, I'm a wholesaler and make five grand. And I look at them like, man, you crazy, bro. What are you doing? Stop. Uh, pump the brakes. Pump, 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 pump. Like, you know, the Volkswagen, you got to pump the brakes. Like, pump, 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 pump. That's where they get pumped the brakes. You know? Okay. All right. Pump the brakes, man. Slow it down. Look. <clears throat> By me educating a couple of wholesalers, like, look, man, 
there's nothing different that you're doing when you're wholesaling single family houses. There's nothing different. You're just looking at single family houses. Reach out to these people that own multifamilies and bring them to me. Here's the one thing, because most wholesalers, they're using a little bit of gut instinct and a little bit of comping, but they don't really understand numbers most of the time. So I'm like, look, just send me the deal. And by the time I break it down for them, they were like, oh, and I'm like, look, man, I'll bring in Jim. My friend, I got Chris. He brought a, a eight unit deal to us. And I'm like, dude, he was just wholesaling, make his money. And I was like, I'm not mad at you. Like, get your money. Like, there's no, because he wasn't greedy. And there's no reason you don't have to be. But like, sometimes you can be greedy, man. We held on, managed it. And then we end up, that deal he brought us, I kept him in the deal and we ended up selling for just let's just shy of a hundred grand. So educating some of your people that wholesale, like, Hey, letting them know what you get. Like, you know, wholesalers are made to order, man. They like, Hey, what you want? Man, I want this in Cle Cleveland or Chicago, downtown. I want to hear in Cincinnati in this part of town. And when they come across something, they call you. So it's the same thing with multifamily. Um, just tell people what you're looking for. And I promise you, man, they'll come across something. They'll find it. All right. Uh, who else we got? Vanessa said the best way to meet wholesalers. Uh, oh, here we go. And we got a couple of questions here. What's the best way to meet wholesalers? Man, go to Rhea, join the Facebook group, go to Burr Invest, go to Apartment Investing Secrets, join the groups, talk amongst yourselves here. Uh, multiple people have deals. And some people are wholesalers, they don't even know it, right? Just let people know what you're doing. I mean, I, I told some people that don't really mess with real estate and uh, their house, their, their father or whoever was losing their house. And they was like, I'm not really into real estate, but I know a guy that does. Excuse me. I, 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 I reached out to him. I met him at such and such. And he told me if I had a deal, just call him. So they called me and guess what? I bought the deal. So is that easy? Uh, Tracy Ling asks, what about the existing capital reserve account with the current owner? Now, I'm not sure what your question is about that. What about the existing capital reserve account with the current owner? Uh, I, I guess you're asking uh, if, if you assume the debt, does that capital reserve account? Yes, I, I think that's where you're going. If, if you assume the debt and they already have a capital reserve account uh, tied to that, do you get that? Yes. And then what's going to happen is either A, the, the seller is going to say, hey, I'm just walking away. That's so you keep that. Or B, I'm going to need you to cash me out because the bank ain't going to give up that bread. I'm just letting you know. They ain't giving up that bread, baby. You know, especially if they put butter and spaghetti on it. Okay. You ain't getting that. But you can't tell that seller, like, hey, man, or, or the seller will tell the buyer, like, look, I'll let you assume this debt, but I got like 100, 200, 300 grand in reserves. You need to pay me for that. So th that's the good thing about that. Uh, going once, going twice. We got anything else? Nope. All right, man. Hey, that's our session for the Q&A, man. Uh, so Instagram, you got anything, man? All y'all tell me where you're from. We got Carl Lewis checking in. Everybody's checking in. Uh, yeah. No questions over here. Uh, Instagram just happy they can hear us. <laughs> uh, so look, man, we'll just jump right into Mike's Millionaire Mindset. Look, man, I, I wish I could... Man, listen, you're going to grind, but, but I, I wanted to share something, but this is, this is universal because I coach as well. I was talking to some kids, man, and, and every time they get something, they want it, they, they start learning something. They want to then jump off and do something else. And, but what I'm here to tell you is repetition. Doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. 
And then they say, but, but Coach Mike, we did that yesterday. Yeah, you're going to do it again. But we did that yesterday. Do it again. And so your routine, you must do over and over and over again with that commitment and you'll get there. See, like some of these kids, they don't have the endurance and I'm working with my kids now and I broke it down for them. But even with track, I was like, dude, I know you're running a hundred meter, but you need your core, right? Your stomach area, you got that stomach area. Now some of you got the Dunlap, it Dunlapped over your belly, but me too. But for the most part, you got to tighten up that core and you got to be able to run for a long distance to have that endurance. Because when you run that 100 meters, that first 50 meters is all right. But then after that 50 meters, that's when a second win or a second gear kicks in. But it's because you have the endurance to turn it up. And see, so just like in real estate, you got to get in this routine of training, of working, of cold calling. Of, of talking to people, of networking, at looking at deals, at, at, at analyzing them, talking to bakers, talking to investors, talking to wholesalers, finding, you know, getting your name out there because your network is your net worth. And when you begin to move into a routine like that, that's when you'll start succeeding your success. But if you just go around just doing an average, right? Only given 60%, right? And, 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 and 60% ain't even average. It's 70%. And look, if you go to a Catholic school, private school, 70% ain't even average. 76 is average. Yeah. You know, if you, for those who went to Catholic school, private school, uh, A is 94, uh, it stops at 94. So 94 to 100, that's an A. So get 90 to 93 is just not going to get it. You got to go more than average. If you're expecting great returns, you got to do great things. If you want to be the greatest, you got to do the greatest things. But everybody wants to do all this work and get all this great return. That's not possible. You got to get in a routine. And stay committed. And look, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I love the game. I love real estate. I love what it did. First of all, it bought me the shirt. Like, who wouldn't want this shirt? Okay. <laughs> I love this shirt. But I get tired, man. Uh, yeah, I do. I want to quit sometimes. Yes. Yes. Let's be clear. Uh, Mike Ely gets tired. You know why? Because I, I want to go. And, and, and coach my kids. I want to go travel and, 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 and coach them in tournaments. I, I no, I know. And yes, Mike, I got millions. Yes, I got millions. I'm about to cash out and get millions. And you're like, well, when's it enough? It's never enough. Because the money, I'm not doing it. For, see, the, here's the thing. I'm not doing it just for me. That's my why. I'm doing it for my family and my community. So I get, get up every day. If it was just for me, I would have quit a long time ago. Like, I'm about to refinance, and I'll pull probably four or five million liquid after we sell a couple of things. We'll be in a great position. And you'll be like, man, we ain't got to do nothing else. But it's not enough. That's right, the legacy. I'm living for a legacy. Man, a million dollars ain't going to get it no more. A million dollars? Come on, man. You, you, most people going to live to at least 70. So, so a million bucks? Well, I'm, I'm 50, right? I'm 50, right? Okay, so I'm 50. So I, let's, let's say I get to 75, but I'm going for 90, baby. But let's, let's, let's do basic math. Especially if I go into 90, a million ain't going to get it. 20, so 20 years, so a million dollars divided by 20. That's 50 grand a year. Now look, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not knocking 50 grand. I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking it. I was there, but that ain't no money, man. That ain't, that you weren't meant to live like that. 
You weren't meant to live paycheck to paycheck. You were meant to get fulfillment. You were live, meant to be in abundance. You were meant to be above average. You were meant to be supernatural. And so you can't be supernatural making 50 grand, man. Right? You got supernaturals dropping that money, buying that, 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 getting on the jet when it's necessary or doing more than just praying for your family members when they in need. That's what motivated me. I didn't want to just pray for my dad when, when he was sick. I didn't want to just hope and pray that he got better while I went to my nine to five. No, I went to work. And then you guess what? Because I was flexible, I controlled my own time. I was with my dad in that hospital room in the graveyard shift, making sure he had his music and feed him. And yes, I did change the family Jews. If you ever go through that situation, man, you go change the family Jews, bro. Right? And I was there. My daddy took care of me and my diapers. Why can't I take care of him in this time? So I'm just telling you, man, you can't quit, man. You got to get in this routine and just keep working. Look, I'm getting to the top of the mountain, but it's a matter of perspective. To some, y'all be like, Mike's at the top. Man, I look up and see, I ain't looking at me. I'm looking at these other cats that got billions. We going from millions to billions now. We already went from broke to millions. Now it's millions to billions. And I want to see you there. All right, so I'm here to educate you, to shift your mindset, mindset, but still the work is up to you. You must be committed to your routine. And when you do that, you'll not only change your life, but you'll change your family and community forever. Hey man, that's my time. God bless you, God keep you. May God bless you beyond your belief, but not your capacity. You're one big deal away. Take it easy. Hey, Victor, you was like, what brand is that, man? I forgot this one, man. Uh, I got it from my local boutique store. But uh, hey, man, Tracy, thanks so much. Arthur, where's our music at? Charles, uh, Chavez, Young, Drew, Fitzgerald, Forrest. Uh, Hatesh, my man. Who else we got there, man? Camago Edwards. Hope I didn't mess that up. Kristen, Malika Carvani, my man, Detroit represent. I'm coming to your town, man. We got a 707 tournament. We're going to be there. Uh, Malika, yeah. And, uh, 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 Matthew, Salmon, all right. Sovereign, Thomas, Victor, and Womack. Hey, man, thanks so much for joining us. All of you to join us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Apartment Investment Secrets, The Bird. Thanks so much for joining us, man. Hey, man, we'll see you real soon. All right. Join us next week. And, and remember, you're one big deal away.